Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is I want to show you how to shoot the thumbnail for your videos with your phone because there's an easy way to do that without going through a bunch of hassle. One of the things that happens is when you shoot a photograph with your phone, it's not letterbox. It's not in that 16 to 9 format of a video. So you have to reformat the picture. Otherwise, you have black bars on both sides of your YouTube video for your thumbnail. And if you want to put fancy writing and stuff like that on there, you can edit the photograph after the fact to make that thumbnail as fancy as you want to. What I want to show you is a quick, easy way to make that thumbnail without having to do any editing after the fact, if that's what you want to do. And the way you do that is you take that photo in video. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now. This is the kit that I took with me when I went to Budapest. It's a very simple kit. It doesn't take up hardly any room in your backpack. It's pretty much what we talked about. It's got a mount, a mic, two moment lenses, my headphones, my Joby tripod, and my cell phone. That's what I took with me the whole time I was in Hungary. So every picture I've posted that I've taken there and every video was taken with this setup. I didn't have any of the other peripherals with me at all. Okay, so let's say for the sake of argument, this is going to be the thumbnail for our video that we're making now. We've got our kit laid out on a table. We've got to move things around once we get to video mode to make sure everything's in the shot. Now, if we had a wide angle lens on there, we could get more in there. But the object of the game here is just to make a letterbox photo so we don't have to get too complicated with this. The trick is when you put this camera on the phone in video mode and you start recording, there's a white button that shows up at the bottom. And that white button takes photographs in whatever mode your camera is shooting in. So in this case, if we stop the video, if I go back here, click on the video and just go ahead and delete that video altogether, all of those pictures are still on the camera and they're in letterbox format. Now I have a YouTube thumbnail I didn't have to mess with. And I use this trick a lot even when I'm video taping somewhere like when I did a boat tour the other night in Hungary. I was shooting video, 4K video, and this is set up to shoot 4K. We'll talk about that in a few minutes as well. I was shooting 4K video and as I was shooting the video, I was hitting that button taking pictures. And those pictures are very, very high quality pictures. I'll post a few of them on my community page and I already have posted a couple so that you can see the quality of those images. They have been through an image editor, but you can see how crystal clear those images are coming right off the video in the camera by using that button to take pictures in video. And that is how you make your letterboxed YouTube thumbnail. Then you can go back and edit that photograph if you want to, to put sidebars in it and your name and you know whatever the video is about and hey look at my camera stuff or whatever it is. Okay, easy trick. That's number one. Okay, let's talk about taking photos and videos and making them the best quality photographs we can make and the best quality video we can get. If we just use the onboard settings on our camera and leave it at that, it's going to give us good quality. The iPhone's set up to take pictures in dummy proof mode, but they're not going to be exactly what you want necessarily all of the time. So in this case, right now, if anything changes, it's going to change the exposure. You see how it's, when I wave my hand in front of it, you get a big flash of light in there and then it goes back. We want to get rid of that kind of thing happening in video for sure. In pictures, we may want to focus on a certain point. So let's say in this photo we want to focus on the lantern. That's what we want to focus is that lantern, like the cap of that lantern. So we're going to hold down on the screen to get a square on there until we get an AEAF lock at the top. And that means we've got an exposure lock and a focus lock on the point we put that square. Now we can move our finger up and down. You'll see there's a little sun there. And as that sun moves up and down, it changes the exposure level. So if we want it a little bit darker or a little bit lighter, we can do that. Or if we just want to leave it where it's at, that the camera says is right, we can leave it there where the camera thinks it's the best. All right. Now, as long as it's on AF lock, when you take a photo, 
it's going to come right back and be focused on the exact same spot. If you do not lock it, let's get it off lock here. If you just put your finger on there to focus on that spot, it'll focus on that spot and you can still change your exposure level. But once you take that picture, that's all gone. And you can see I'm shooting pictures in live mode. We'll talk about that in just a minute as well. That button is right here on the side, right there. Puts my pictures in live mode. What that does for you is it takes several pictures. So when I look at that picture, click on this, if I go to edit that thing, there's going to be more than one of these pictures and it's going to select the best one. So if I go to edit, you can see there are several of those same pictures because I shot it in live. So it shot a bunch of frames and it's going to highlight the one that the camera thinks is the best. But if it's a walking shot or something like that, where you want the legs spread a certain distance apart, or you want to make sure sand's being kicked up on the film, or in the picture, I mean, you may want to select a certain photo and make that your key photo. And then when you decide to save it and you hit done, you can either save that photo and only that photo, or you can save them all. So that's just a little tip or trick on how to lock your focus and lock your exposure how to change your exposure if you want to once it's locked and how to get your focus on a certain part of the picture that you want and then the camera won't worry about other things in the background being in focus it's only going to worry about being in focus where you push the button for it to stay in focus at when you take the pictures again if you lock it and it says AEAF lock at the top by holding it down it will keep that even if you shut the camera, stop the video, stop the photo, whatever, it will keep that for you. Okay? That's another trick. Okay, you remember I told you to hang on to those headphones, right? Your iPhone headphones. Plug your headphones in when you're taking photographs, especially still photographs on a tripod like this. Get yourself exactly what you want. Zoom in a little bit, and you can zoom in just by doing this with the screen. Get your exposure and your focus locked. And then anytime you hit the volume up or down button on this, the camera will take a picture. That keeps you from having to do this and possibly move the camera around. You can just do it with this and take all the pictures you want without touching the camera once it's on a tripod. Okay, the next thing I want to show you is what's called burst mode. All right. We know that if we have the live mode on, it's going to take several pictures at one time. But it is a very short sequence. It takes, I don't remember what it is, 15, 20 pictures possibly, but it's a very short burst, okay? Let's say you've got a car driving by or someone running down a beach or you're at a softball game, you're trying to catch a swing and a hit and the ball coming off the bat. You may want to use burst mode. You'll have to have your live mode turned off and then all you have to do is touch the photo button and hold it down and it will keep racking up the pictures until you let go. That just took 36 pictures that fast. All right. Then you can hit select, pick the photo that you want. It will automatically give you what it thinks is the best one, but you can pick a different one. Hit done. I picked two there. Keep only two favorites. See, I've got two of these that I tagged. If I untag one of them, and hit done, it's going to say keep only one favorite or keep everything. If I keep only the one favorite, the rest of them get erased. So that gives you an easy way to take action shots that you're in a hurry to take, but you don't want to miss a certain area of that sequence. Like I said, somebody's running by, you want to catch them at a certain point, start the burst before they get to you, stop the burst after they're gone, and then you can pick which photo is the best. Okay. Couple more things I want to discuss with you real fast on the camera here. I'm kind of wrestling around the tripod to do this. Go to settings, go to your camera. Okay? You have a grid on off slider right there. The grid gives you this on your camera so you've got lines on the face of your camera so that you can actually line things up with those grids when you're shooting to keep your shots straight if you're shooting landscapes and things like that. I find it helpful, you may not, okay? But you can toggle that on off right there. 
Here's the important part. Record video, record slow-mo. Recording video, you've got several options on your iPhone. I record mine at 4K at 24 frames per second. That's going to give you some really good video. 60 frames per second is going to give you the best, but it's also going to eat up the most memory. It shows you right here. One minute of video at 4K at 60 frames per second is 400 megabytes with a higher resolution and a smoother video. Whereas 4K at 24 frames, which is film style, again, film style, like cinema style, is 135 megabytes for every minute of video, okay? So that's what I've got mine set up to. You can change it whatever you want. 180, you know, 180 HD is standard for YouTube. 4K allows you some flexibility. I like 4K video. Slow-mo will not allow you to go to 4K, but you can set up the highest frame rate at 240 and it's going to take up 480 megabytes for one minute of slow-mo. All right, so it takes up a lot of memory to shoot slow-mo, but it's some really cool footage. So I recommend using the highest resolution you can on slow-mo stuff. All right? All right, so that gives you... Move this up a little bit. All right, so that gives you guys just a few tips and tricks on things that you can do to use your onboard camera app and just a very few accessories like I said if you've got an external mic a mount for your iPhone that will accept the mic and some kind of a bending tripod like this Joby tripod you can shoot anything you want to shoot for the most part if you want to get more technical and make things easy on yourself get some external lenses again I use moment lenses I think they're the best they're about a hundred bucks a lens I'll put links to them in the bottom of this video but I think you'll like them especially the wide angle that's the one I use more than anything else especially when I'm shooting landscapes and then of course get yourself a decent mic if you have to start off with a $25 mic it'll work just fine but for double that money you can get a really good road mic and you won't be sorry but there's a big difference between the iPhone that you probably have already purchased and carry every day and even three or four hundred dollars in accessories and a four thousand dollar base camera DSLR with no other lenses except the one that comes on the camera just some tips or tricks for you guys again I like to stay common man people confuse that to me common man means common sense doesn't mean cheap doesn't necessarily mean inexpensive it means what is the smartest way to spend my money to get the most for my hard-earned dollar okay and sometimes the most is the best guarantee sometimes the most is the highest quality with the best guarantee sometimes the best is whatever will get the job done and it doesn't necessarily have to be the most perfect thing as long as it works well there's lots of these bendy tripods they'll all work there's lots of different mics they'll all work you might get a little better sound quality from something like a Rode than something like a $20 mic but they're probably all made in the same country anyway just some have a little bit better quality control and maybe a little bit better sensor in them but for your hard-earned money a $25 mic most people will not be able to tell the difference because I can tell you now I'm using a $25 mic on top of this Canon right now not a road and I bet this video sounds just fine I appreciate your views I appreciate your support I thank you for everything you do for our school for our family for our business for all our sponsors instructors affiliates and friends and I'll be back with another video in this series or another as soon as I can thanks guys